Yeah, thanks to Heather for asking me the question about herding content ideas, like herding cats. Uh, they're just, they come in random times. And how do you then take all those random ideas and actually turn them into content like blog posts, videos, and things like that? And I'll just quickly uh, summarize my content workflow. And uh, if you have questions, you can chat below. And uh, uh, most of you are seeing this in the Authentic Content Flow course. So we will go much more in depth into all these content workflow things. But here's the summary of how I do it. First thing I do is when ideas come to me, uh, and I'm going to show you on screen. Um, the first thing I do is to capture them into my Todoist category called video ideas. And why do I call it video ideas and not, um, you know, blog post ideas? Well, it's kind of a remnant of the time where I could not write. I was so blocked for most of my life with writing that I hated writing. And what I could do though is I could talk about things on video. Like I, I. Practice, 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 practiced so much to finally get not shy on video. And I was able to still do that better than I could do writing. So anyway, that's why video for me originally was the first place that content happened. Um, nowadays, I've gotten practice, 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 practice. I now no longer mind writing as much. So I actually write now before I do make videos. Doesn't matter. Long story short, some of you might want to do videos first. Some of you might want to write first. The point I'm trying to make here is have a place to capture your ideas as they come to you. Now, you might say, George, I'm in the shower and I use Aqua Notes, which is a waterproof paper notepad in the shower, and I write down my ideas there. Great. George, I'm walking my dog and I, you know, record a little idea on my voice memo. Great. You have all these different places, but at, at the end of the day, literally at the end of the day or the end of next day, uh, I, I call it capture categorized calendar, right? Like like all your random ideas, blog posts, aqua notes, voice memos, post-it notes should should be, you should have a regular time, not should, but I find it really helpful to have a regular time, like at the end of each workday to corral those ideas into a single place like this, video ideas, like, I, like, like I'm showing you here. Okay, so that's step one is, well, step one is to capture them wherever you are with whatever tool. Step two is to have a regular time on your calendar that you get disciplined about where you corral those ideas into one place so that it's not all over the place. It's like, okay, I have one. And step three is to then ask yourself, where do I take, well, I'll, I'll talk, talk, where do I take these things now and put it into my content creation workflow? For me, the workflow goes like this. I actually go to Twitter and I take my content ideas and basically um, once a day, once during, you know, once, usually once a day, sometimes um, I do several, several tweets in, in one day and then I take a break for two or three days or four days. But I try to do it once every work day. I will come into one of my content ideas. And uh, for example, um, you know, let's say I'm doing this and, and then I will go to Twitter and I will tweet out my idea, I'll just I'll just start tweeting out blah 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 blah, and then I'll click add tweet blah 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 because it's only two hundred eighty characters, right? I just I just add add some ideas, and the reason why I do it on Twitter is I believe I have the right perspective about how to use Twitter. Twitter, too many people, especially for small audiences like ours, right? If you have less than you know hundred thousand people on Twitter, you have a small audience on Twitter, right? So for small audiences, people think ah, oh, Twitter is a you know, content promotion. No, Twitter is not a content. Twitter is a public journaling tool. Twitter is a tool for, hey, um, what if uh, I have an idea and I don't want someone in the future to go, you took my idea. No, I didn't. I tweeted this out in January of 2023. You came out with your book in, Jan in February of 2025, but I already tweeted it. I'm not going to sue you. I'm just saying that don't sue me because I already had this. Idea. So I use Twitter as a timestamp for the public that I have this idea. I, I'm not, I'm never going to, I don't care about copyright. As you might know, if you follow my stuff, I, everything's uncopyrighted. I don't care about suing anybody or telling anybody cease and desist. I don't want people suing me and telling me cease and desist because look, I came up with the idea three, five, 10 years ago. You can see the Twitter timestamp is true. So I use Twitter as public journaling because I want to get ideas out there as soon as I can. Um, in part to lay claim to the fact that I, I had the idea, you know, other people can have the idea. So, so public journaling, Twitter, great, great for it. And so I try to show up once a day on Twitter or once every several days, several tweets to like, here's a, here's an idea. So that's, 
that's how I take my my wrangled ideas, you know, in my video ideas to do list into my Twitter. And then every Friday, or I'll, I'll summarize it, just pretend that I only create content on Fridays. I actually create content a little bit uh, on other days, but let's just say I create content on Fridays. I write a blog post and I make a Facebook live on, on Fridays. Okay. So when it comes Friday for me, the time to, to write the blog post and make the video, I go to my, I go to my Twitter, right? I go to my Twitter threads and here's what I do. I go to my Twitter threads. I basically scroll down and I go, Hmm, which one has the most likes? Oh, this one has the most likes, 11 likes, right? This one only has two likes. This one has zero likes, zero likes. This one has 11 likes. So I'm going to go ahead and make a blog post slash video about this. Now I've already, um, I've already, uh, replied to myself several times, you know, there was a Twitter thread so that I, ha I have additional ideas that will, that this all goes into a single blog post slash video. Does that make sense? So that's my workflow. And so I take it from the shower to, to do list my video ideas, uh, to do list. those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, my, my, um, my, my video ideas category is using the software called to do list. You know, it's, it's one of my projects and video ideas or blog post ideas. Or, so I take from shower to to do is wrangle them here to uh, when I go to Twitter once a day, I look down whatever I feel energized by. So that's the thing. I get to be like a hippie, right? I get to be, I get to play with whatever feels good. Every day when I go to Twitter, I go, hmm, I'm going to scroll down my video ideas. What feels good today? What feels energizing to me today? What, what am I passionate about today? To, to tweet about. So I'm going to go ahead and tweet about that. Okay. And when, once I'm done, of course, I click the checkbox and it disappears from here. So I take it from that to here to Twitter. And then eventually from Twitter, Twitter tells me what is getting the most likes. If you have a small audience on Twitter and you don't get any likes, then you just pick, you get to pick whatever you feel like picking from Twitter. But Twitter is for me a way to like just publicly journal my ideas. It could be totally a mess. I don't care. Twitter, I don't care if it's a mess because so few people read my tweets anyway, but at least it's there as a public journal. And then I take it to blog post, Facebook video, Instagram live, et cetera. So I hope that's helpful to kind of see my workflow. And then now it's your turn to create your own workflow for how you want to uh, take your random ideas and turn them into writings and or videos. And I, one more thing I'll say about my workflow. After I've made my videos, I, I let my videos go for several weeks to see which of my videos do well. And then once a month, I will take a look at my videos in the past month and which ones did well, the, the best performing videos. I then take the video and I upload it as a podcast because my podcast platform, which is Captivate, can take my YouTube file video. I download it from you, my, my own YouTube video. I download it and I upload it as a, <laughs> directly to my Captivate and it transforms it into audio. And I'm very smart to, to, to be able to do that. So that's my entire flow. Now I have writings, videos, podcasts, of course, also tweets. And so that's how it works. And eventually, several weeks later, I look back at which of my writings did well, and I transform them into Instagram carousel posts. That's, a, that's another part of my content workflow. So hope that helps.